We are back in the word, and we are still going through this debate with your boy Raekwon, all right? And the discussion was entitled, Jesus Did Not Die For Your Sins. Now, I have some interesting facts, I believe to be facts, concerning the Gospels. All right, it reads, in Christian tradition, the four evangelists are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right, and these are the authors attributed to the gospel accounts. All right, so now, if I go down, it reads, most scholars agreed that they are the work of un known Christians and were composed C 68 1 10 CE the majority of the New Testament scholars also agree that the gospels do not contain eyewitness accounts but that they present the theologies of their communities rather than the testimony of eyewitnesses, okay? So, they believe that the four gospel writers are pseudonyms, all right? And we know that a pseudonym is a made-up name, a fictitious name, okay? Now, we want to keep going. We want to keep going with this debate. Going to pick up where we left off at. But... According to according whatever shared you got, you have to prove it. You can't say you don't believe something and don't prove it. You're just saying you like well, there's, there's discrepancies in the stories, man. There's discrepancies in the gospels. But I want you to do like what I asked, okay? Do you have a scripture verbatim where God is saying Jesus is going to die for your sins. Just be honest. Bro, you don't have that you don't have that scripture. They they the, Jonas preached the remission of sins. All of the prophets that were getting closer to Jesus' time were preaching, you know, repent of your sins, right? They were then they, Jonah preached the remission of sins. Now we're gonna look at that real quick. All right. Remission is a word that's only used in the New Testament. Jonah did not preach remission of sins. Okay, you got to pay attention to the words people say. Now, we know that Jonah was sent to Nineveh. All right. To preach unto them. For them to repent, and we know that they did repent, and if you pay attention to the Bible, you'll see that they eventually went back <laughs> into sin, but he did not preach remission. Remission is a New Testament word. Y'all hear that? Remission is a New Testament word. So now we're going to get back to this debate. Preaching someone's going to die for your sins. They were preaching that you would die for your own sins. That's Ezekiel 18.20. That is Jeremiah chapter 31. Huh? I never, I never said Ezekiel. Ezekiel is, is almost at the beginning of the book. Hold no. up. Hold up. How is Ezekiel at the beginning of the Bible and why does it matter? Why does it matter? Okay. We're talking about the Bible, the Christian's Bible. And we're going to get Ezekiel 18, 20 real quick. And I'm going to read that. And I call Ezekiel, Ezekiel. This is how you kill a Christian. Talking about Jesus died for your sins. This is going to be Ezekiel 18, 20. The soul that sinneth 
it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. What does the word iniquity mean? Sin. Sin. The son shall not bear the sin of the father. Neither shall the father bear the sin of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him. So we know that a man is going to be rewarded according to his works. Now, this is God's way. This has always been God's way. If you do evil, you're going to die. If you do good, you're going to live. Nobody's going to pay for your sins. We know this from the story of Moses. Let's get that real quick. This is going to be... Exodus chapter 32, and I am going to start at verse 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, notice he's not talking about his sin. The Israelites, they sin. He said, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me. Blot means take my name out of the book of life. He said, hey, if you forgive them, you can take my name out of the book of life. If not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. All right, so Moses is trying to die for the Israelites. Look what God says. Verse 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So this is God's way. This has always been God's way. If you sin, you're going to die. Ain't nobody going to step in and pay the price for you. Moses just tried to. Okay, and his plea was rejected. God was like, you know what? Whoever sinned, that is going to die. That's how he did things, and that's how he always does things, because God doesn't change, all right? And I'm going to get that real quick. This is going to be Malachi 3.6, and now you're going to fully understand it. This is Malachi. Notice Malachi means messenger, and this is the last time God spoke in the 66 books of the Bible through Malachi. And it reads, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. What is that saying? That is saying, if God would have changed, the sons of Jacob would have been destroyed. Okay, but because he has not changed and his method was this, the father's is not going to pay for the son's sin and the sons are not going to pay for the father's sin. Everybody is going to have an equal opportunity. If you sin, you're going to die. That's why when we read the book of Kings, we hear about one king being wicked and then another king being righteous and his father was wicked. And the son was righteous. And then sometimes the son would be righteous, but sometimes the son would follow in the wickedness of their fathers. Okay. They all had equal opportunity. Now we're going to get back to this debate. Here we go. Ezekiel's in the middle. He's, he's, yeah, he's before Daniel, right before Daniel after Lamentations. (laughs) Hold up. He's what, what does it matter? He's Old Testament, right? You just said that. Why are you running from Ezekiel? Why are you running from the truth? It don't matter. It don't matter. Here you are in the New Testament. You all in the New Testament talking about communion. All right. Why does it bother you that I'm going to Ezekiel? Ezekiel. But let's keep going. It's Old Testament. Yeah, go ahead. He he he's after Isaiah. He's Jeremiah said it. Jeremiah said you're going to die for your own sins. This is going to be the book of Jeremiah, chapter thirty-one, verse thirty, and it reads: 
But so Aaron, go, go ahead. Let me make, make, make sure y'all get there. Yeah. Jeremiah 31. It says, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Iniquity is sin. Okay. Okay. Everyone is gone. Now, now, look at the look at the very next verse under that. Thirty one. The new covenant. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in that day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. It was a husband. He's talking to them. He's talking about that in the earlier scripture right there in verse 29. Are you, are you looking at it? He's comparing both covenants. Okay, and he's talking about the new covenant is the covenant where they're going to die for their own sins. But you got to look at it. I'm going to read it. Verse 29, it says, in those days. Okay, which days are he's talking about? The new covenant. In those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. Okay. Now, this is speaking of the new covenant. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall covenant. be set on edge. Okay? That's not of the new covenant. Because verse 31, the verse which is after those verses that you're, you're, you're talking about, is the new covenant. Verse 31, when he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will make a new covenant. So how can you say he's speaking about the new covenant? Because the whole chapter 31, if you look at it, he's comparing the days that are then to the days that are coming. If All right. you constantly... All right, y'all. Now y'all got to go to Jeremiah chapter 31. And we're going to start at verse 27. All right, and we're going to go nice and slow so y'all can pick up on what's going on. Now, this is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beasts. Now, if y'all look at this, he's talking about the future. And he's talking about another nation. That's why he said, with the seed of beasts. Now we're going to keep going. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass. He's speaking of the new covenant right now. 27 and 28, he is talking about the new covenant. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. Now listen, verse 29. In those days now listen y'all if i'm saying in those days am i talking about the past or am i talking about the future past the future say it again the future the future in those days okay not in the past he's saying in those days because those days have not come all right so you're right in the future so this is speaking of the old covenant or the new covenant new covenant. the new covenant right so now we're going to keep going all right so this is going to be verse 29 pay attention in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on 
edge. Now, in order for you to understand that, I'm going to take y'all to Lamentation. And we're going to come back. We're going to come back because I want y'all to catch this stuff. All right. This is going to be Lamentations chapter five, verse seven. Now, I'm going to repeat the phrase. All right. The fathers have eaten ripe grapes. Okay. And the children's teeth are set on edge. What does that mean? That means the fathers have sinned. And are not, and we have borne their iniquities. So the fathers have sinned, and now the children is paying the consequence. I hope y'all caught that. The fathers have sinned, because the fathers have eaten those grapes. And now the children has to pay for it. God is saying, look. You're not going to be able to say that no more. Because remember, that is talking about the past. That is talking about the old covenant. So now when we go back to Jeremiah chapter 31, in those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. That's the past. Verse 30. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. That is the future. It's not going to be like it used to be. Okay? The children are not going to pay for the father's sins. And now you see, that's the spirit that's in Christianity. What is the spirit in Christianity? Oh, the son has paid for everybody's sin. Okay, and we, we're reading right here in Jeremiah and it's telling you in those days, they shall say no more in the future. They're not going to say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. Verse 30, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Now, did it say did it say Everyone has died for their iniquity or it says everyone shall die for their iniquity. Shall. Shall is talking about the future. This is talking about the new covenant. So you got to disregard what he's talking about. So now we're going to keep going. Go up. He's talking about the days to come. He's talking about the new covenant. The new covenant is going to be every man accountable for their own sins. This is why you have scriptures of Jesus saying he's going to reward every man according to their works. All right? That's why if you really look at the Bible, if you really study the Bible, if you go to Ezekiel 18, 20, okay, he's telling you the same thing. Every man is going to die for their own sins. You're not going to be able to say, hey, because of what my father did, now I'm going into captivity. It's not going to be like the old covenant. The old covenant was based on what your parents did. But the new covenant is going to be based on what you do. All right. How clear is that? That is clear. That is so clear. And this is seen in Exodus chapter 20. Okay, when he said, I am a jealous God visiting the fathers, okay, upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those that hate me. Those were the sour grapes, okay? That's how it used to be. I'm going to punish the children based on what the fathers have done. But now God is saying, look, the days is coming when every man is going to die for their own sin. I accidentally clicked something and something else just want to pop up. Let me go on back. Here we go. All right. Right, right. And you know why? God said like that, right? Because the new covenant is believing in the Son of God, which is Jesus, right? You can't you can't force somebody else to believe. So if that person doesn't believe that Jesus will wash away their sins, he will die in his own sin. I thought Jesus paid for the sins. Once y'all understand 
what Christianity is all about, you will understand that if Jesus really paid for everybody's sins, nobody would go to hell. Nobody. There would be no need for hell because <laughs> Jesus paid for the sins, okay? If you bought something, okay, you can't take it back. Is yours. If Jesus paid for everybody's sins, then there would be no need for a hell. Okay? So, let's keep going. You can get it. Mm, no. It says, it says, it says sins. Okay? When you look at it, every man shall die for his own sins. Okay? And according to the Christian, uh, the only sin that a person is going to go to hell for is not receiving Jesus. Okay? And, like I said, I don't want to go through a whole, whole bunch, you know what I mean? Because, apparently, me and you got differences. Okay? We still talking. It's been a while. We haven't disrespected one another yet. You know what I mean? I just want to stay on the topic. Okay? If I, what I'm showing you, like, for instance, when I go to Deuteronomy 24, 16, okay, it, it tells me that the son, Deuteronomy twenty four sixteen, the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. So if you look at the Bible, okay, and you study it, you'll see that Moses has nothing to say about Jesus dying for your sins. Nothing. He's against it. He's against Son, child, daughter, sacrifice. That was in this farewell speech. He's against, He's against son, human sacrifice. He's exactly. God has always been against. All right, y'all. Let's go to that. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. We got to go to 32. All right. Now, in the book of Deuteronomy, these are the last words of Moses. These last chapters, 33 and 34. Okay, so now I want, I'm going to give somebody an opportunity to read. All right. I want somebody to read verse 17. Matter of fact, start at 16. This is a book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up. That's what the Christians are doing today with Jesus. Keep going. Whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Christians only think about Jesus. They mention nothing about the Father. Okay, they actually believe Jesus is the father because the scriptures that are in John speaking of I and my father are one and things like that. So let's keep going. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. All right. So they was passing their sons and daughters through the fire. All right. And if you look at that, that word aboard means he hated them. He hated them for sacrificing their children, but he sacrificed his. Look at the hypocrisy <laughs> in Christianity. Now go to verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. So Moses speaks about the kingdom going to another nation right here in Deuteronomy. But he says nothing about Jesus dying for your sins. Okay. Damn. So that just shows you. That just shows you that Moses is against son and daughter sacrifice. Now we're going to go back to where he was at. Human sacrifice. He never sacrificed anybody. Anybody. That's not something he does. Okay. But apparently in the New Testament, okay, there's this narrative painted that Jesus died for your sins 
Although not one Christian can take me to the Old Testament and show me a scripture where God is saying, look, that said the Lord, Moses, you know what, Moses, um, this animal sacrifice stuff is about to be over because you know what, I'm about to send my son Jesus in the future to die for your sins. That kind of talk is nowhere in there. It's nowhere in there. And I believe Moses is I believe Moses is going to be a witness against you. Okay. I believe that Moses is going to be a witness against the Christians. Okay. And that's why I've been asking people if they can show me something. Now think about it like this, bro, and I'm gonna let you go. Think about it like this. In the book of Numbers, chapter twelve, it reads in verse six, all right. This is what it says. It says, and he, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently. And not in dark speeches. So that is saying all the prophets, God spoke to them in dark sentences. But with Moses, God spoke plainly to him. And he never plainly said about anything about Jesus dying for nobody's sins. What Moses said was the father is not going to bear the sin for the son, and the son is not going to bear the sin for the father. That's why no. you, That's why Christians cannot go to Moses. Moses no. ain't going to say nothing about Jesus dying for nobody's sins. Now, Jesus was not a prophet. That's what you're not understanding. Jesus was not a prophet. He's God himself. So the Bible don't say I'm Jesus. Him. Now, i got to let y'all hear something. Now he's about to go on this Jesus is God spiel. And now I have a time stamp that we're going to play. Now this is his own words, okay? You hear him. He's saying Jesus is God. He's saying Jesus is God. But listen to what he says. God is not our brother. You got to understand, Jesus, God humbled himself into the flesh, right? Humbled himself into the flesh and became man. He was still God, but he was man. Of course, he couldn't just tell everyone, oh, I'm God, I'm God. Y'all heard that. Of course, he couldn't just tell everyone he's God, he's God. What sense does that make? No. So he was being a secret God? If you're God, why you got to hide it? If you're really God, why can't you just tell everybody you God? Okay? Now, this is the stuff I'm telling you, okay? Now, you're going to see that everything he's talking about really makes no sense. Now we're going to go back to where he's at, because right now he's going to be talking about how Jesus is God. Even though he said Jesus couldn't say he was God. It was a prophet? No. When, when, does, when did the Bible say Jesus was a prophet? Jesus All right. Christ. Let's get that. Let's get that real quick, y'all. Let's get how the Bible says Jesus was a prophet. Who's gonna drive you home? I'll make sure y'all write these down. This is going to be Matthew chapter 13, verse 57. And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Now, who was he talking about? Jesus. He was talking about himself. Okay, y'all get a hand clap on that one. Yeah. Yeah. The Gospels is not complicated, y'all. Think about it. God got to make this stuff easy for a child. He's got to make it easy for a child to understand it. That's why when these Christians got to take you to Isaiah 53, and then they got to take you to Genesis chapter 3, and, and all this stuff, and they got to go through a million scriptures to prove that Jesus died for your sins, all that stuff is false. It makes no sense. God loves Jesus. 
All right. And according to the Bible, he is a prophet. And in Islam today, we recognize him as a prophet. He called himself a prophet. And if you look at verse 57, what he's trying to tell you is, don't nobody respect me. It's going to be another nation that is going to respect me. Y'all caught that? He said a prophet is only without honor amongst his own people. So what he's saying is the Israelites don't honor me as a prophet. It's going to be that other nation that I said I'm going to give the kingdom to. That is going to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. They are going to recognize me as the prophet. Not the Israelites. Not the Israelites. A prophet has a whole lot of honor. But not from his own people. It takes another nation of people to respect that prophet. So now, I'm going to give you all another scripture where Jesus is called a prophet. So he called himself a prophet. Now we want a scripture where someone calls Jesus a prophet. All right, so... This is going to be Luke 24, 19, and it reads, And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people. They're telling Jesus right to his face that he's a prophet. All right. Jesus is a prophet. Now, this is John 4, 44, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet have no honor in his own country. Jesus was a prophet. I'm going to give you another one. John 6, 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth that prophet should come into the world he was constantly called a prophet because he is a prophet now we're going to get back to where we was at on himself a prophet in matthew 13 57 i tell you i am more than a prophet hold on let me read it more than a prophet let me read the bible let me read this real quick all right all right now i'm gonna read luke 24 19 and he said unto them what things and they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty and deed, and word before God and all the people. Now, there's many scriptures, bro, that's calling Jesus a prophet. Many scriptures. All right. Now, that's just Luke. Now, I have Mark 6, 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor. But in his own country and among his own kin and among his own house. And he could very do. Can I, can, I finish, can I finish reading verse 5, bro? And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Now, bro, you went way off now if you're going to try to say that Jesus is not a prophet. He called himself a prophet, and others called himself a prophet. Go ahead. Now, what you got to say? Now, can you go? Can you go to Matthew eleven, chapter Matthew eleven, verse nine? Y'all go to Matthew eleven, verse nine, and then y'all write down Matthew eleven nine and Luke seven twenty six. That is Matthew eleven nine and Luke. 726 and I want y'all to pay attention to, to this right here well what oh, went he out to be he's talking about John he's not talking about himself start from verse 7 okay. as they departed Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John right keep going what, 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 listen what went he out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment behold they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses all right so why did jesus bring up 
Soft Raymond, okay? Who knows the answer to this? Because John wore camel's clothing. Dang. Dang. She's spot on. He's talking about John, not himself. This guy is really thinking that Jesus is calling himself more than a prophet. He's talking about John being more than a prophet. And the reason why he didn't say there's none greater than John right here, because he's saying that John is more than a prophet. Even a child can get this. All right, y'all. Y'all knock it off. Y'all knock it off. Man, I know y'all excited. He's talking about John the Baptist. And this is going to be Mark 1, 6. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. Then we have Matthew 3, 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. Okay, you, you know that's unclean. That's an unclean animal. Okay, <laughs> and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. All right, now we know that John the Baptist was a type and shadow of Paul, okay, because John the Baptist, when he got to talking about Jesus being the Lamb of God, and he, he gonna take away all the sins, his head got chopped. His head got chopped suey. Jesus didn't even come, come and bring him out of prison, okay? He was in prison just like Paul was in prison, okay? He had a belt just like Paul had a belt, okay? John the Baptist was a type and shadow of the apostle Paul, proving that Paul did not follow Jesus. John the Baptist had his own followers. John the Baptist wasn't following Jesus, okay? So now, that'll be a whole nother topic, but now we're going to get back to where we was at. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way for thee. That's talking about John the Baptist. He's calling John the Baptist more than a prophet, because it is written. Watch him get a little quiet. Watch him. Of John in Isaiah chapter 40 He's quoting Isaiah 40 And he's talking about John Being written of in Isaiah 40 Which is a messenger Because John sent his disciples And said oh Should we send for another Or are you the Messiah And that's why he stated that That's why he stated that John prepare ye the way for the Lord that's why he stated that I am more than a prophet is more than a prophet. That's so, why hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. You're being recorded right now, and your fellow Christians is going to hear you. So are you saying that Matthew 11, 9 is not talking about John the Baptist being more than a prophet? Go ahead, bro. He's talking about John the Baptist. He's talking about the subject is John the Baptist. Did you pray today? Okay, let me show you, let me show you, right? Let's start from verse 2, let's start from verse 2, right? Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou that we should come, or do we look for another? This is what I'm saying, I know what I'm talking about. John sent his, his, two, his two disciples to go to Jesus and said, Art thou... That we, that we should come, or do we look for, for another? Jesus said unto them, Go and show John again those things which he do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he whosoever shall be offended in me. And as they departed... Whoever shall not, whoever shall not be offended in me. Keep going. Yeah. And as they departed, Jesus began 
to say to unto the multitude concerning John. When he said concerning John, meaning he was healing all of them in open, those prophets spoke to Jesus saying, oh, are you the Messiah? Because John said, thus saying, are you the Messiah or should we look for another? When he sent them on their way, he now speaking to the prophet concerning what John said, what went ye out to see into the wilderness? A read? Because how can John go out into the wilderness to go see oh, the wilderness? Bro. <laughs> oh, no, you took it. There was, no, there was no prophet greater than John the Baptist. Uh, all right, y'all. Let's get the scripture where John is in the wilderness. This is going to be Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And this is why I say he's a type and shadow of Paul, because Paul was in the wilderness as well. But the scripture is saying that John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. I have another scripture for you. This is going to be Mark 1, 4. John did baptize in the wilderness. That's another precept. All right. And I got another one for you. This is going to be Luke 3, 2. Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Okay, so now we got to back up because I just heard him say, how could John be preaching in the wilderness? But go out into the wilderness. Wait, he now speaking to the prophet concerning what John said. What went ye out to see into the wilderness? A read? Because how can John go out into the wilderness to go see oh, the Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Okay. This is what I'm telling you. When, when a person tries to show you scriptures and, and, and preach to you, you got to be able to go to the word of God, okay, so that you're not duped, Okay. So you're not deceived. You got to know your scriptures. All right. If I didn't know, okay, I would have went with it. But because I know, I couldn't agree with it. Now we're going to keep going. And then we, we're practically about done. A few more minutes and we're done. Oh, no, no, you took it. There was, no, there was no prophet greater than John the Baptist. Jesus called John the Baptist okay, a greater no prophet. prophet. Greater than John the Baptist. He I called John the Baptist the a greater prophet. In that context, he's talking about John the Baptist being more than a prophet. Now, all you got to do, bro, to help yourself is just go to Google. All you Christians are saying this. Everybody, Damn. nobody is in disagreement with this. You just, you just got off. You just got off, bro. Jesus is a prophet, okay? And John the Baptist, in that context, he's calling John the Baptist more than a prophet. Now, you can't go against the word, bro. It's telling you John the Baptist was the greatest prophet. Jesus said it, all right? And then he said he was more than a prophet, all right? And that's 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 what it's saying. Where does it? Where is he talking about himself? He's talking about John the Baptist, bro. You did, honestly, did you honestly think that was Jesus talking about himself? Oh yeah, definitely. See right there, he had a moment of truth. He kind of admitted it. He's like, damn. He's like, damn, damn, damn. But just like we was talking about earlier how you got to have enough humility to admit when you off when you wrong you got to have that humility to just be like damn i'm off and right here when i was you know because i'm chilling with bruh i'm chilling with him you know what i mean in the debate and he kind of got real for like a few seconds he was like yeah but then watch y'all he gonna pick back up and then he's not going to believe it watch this it wasn't. He's talking about John the Baptist. All right? About John the Baptist. Like, because, bro, I can, bro, 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 I can read. 
we can we can all read, bro. It's literally telling you this, man. It's literally telling you this. And not only is it confirmed right here, but Jesus said with his own mouth, okay, that there was no prophet greater than John. Okay, he's talking okay, so about John he's being saying that there is no prophet greater than John. Why didn't he just say John was more than a prophet? Just he did. You want me to go? This he is, did. You want me to go into the Bible and see and find that? Where does it say Jesus died for go to Luke, sins? Go to Luke, uh, sins. Go, to Luke, go to Luke chapter seven. No, the same way you want me to go to the Bible and said, "Where does God?" See now he 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 lost. And now he's like, well, show me a scripture where it doesn't say Jesus is going to die for your sins. And now he's switching the whole thing up. So, y'all, we're going to pick back up on this. We're going to pick back up on this. But I encourage y'all when y'all study, study so that you're not deceived. Regardless if it's coming from me, if it's coming from anybody, okay, you have to be aware of wolves in sheep clothing. Okay, you got to be aware and you have to know your scripts. Now it's about that time to get in this sword. Is y'all ready to get in this sword or what? Yes. All right, let's get in it.